I'm Julie Borston and I'm here in Sun Valley, the Allen & Co. Conference, and I'm joined now by Mark Pincus. He's co-founder and executive chairman of mobile gaming company Zenga, uh, and he's also the founder of a new political initiative called WTF. Win the future. Win the future. So what is Win the Future? Win the Future is a virtual political party that's supporting the Democrats with three objectives. The first is we want to enable crowdsourcing great new ideas and great new voices. The second is we want to enable millions more people to engage in the process. And the third is that we want to help Democrats win more elections. And we have an underlying ethos that is pro-social, pro-planet, and pro-jobs. And so how is it exactly going to work? How are you going to get more people involved? We're going to go out and engage with lots of communities. Um, we already have started, but uh, we're really in soft launch right now because the whole product isn't built. Um, we really want to enable a product that, um, a, a web-based product that lets our members uh, propose and vote up agenda items that resonate with them. And then we want to take those through local um, zip code leaders and campus leaders to, throughout the country to college campuses and zip code, every zip code and state. Um, in our first couple days, we had people join um, from almost every state. We had 100 people sign up to be campus leaders. Um, we had people from 40 states donate money. So do you have a sense of how many people are involved now and how many people you expect to be involved in the next couple months or before the 2018 elections? We can't say. I mean, we're, we're really, this is, this is shot on goal. We want to get out and um, engage with a lot of communities and see what resonates. And we looked at the world and said, we have to try something new. And we said, we can't just sit by and watch um, these political parties use the same old, um, not even Web 1.0 tactics um, that we've seen for decades. And we need to start trying to bring some of the innovation that we've seen in social networking and social media into politics. And so why does it make sense for you and Reid Hoffman, who's your partner in this project, um, both Silicon Valley guys, to do something um, for the Democratic Party? Well, it makes sense for us to do it within the Democratic Party because our ethos is closely aligned um, with the Democratic Party. Why uh, me and Reid and, and a team of people with us in Silicon Valley, we look at what we're, what are our talents and what can we offer? And we think we're, um, I don't want to sound geeky, but you know what we've spent our careers doing is designing these social systems that enable millions of people to interact with each other and um, coalesce and drive outcomes. And so we said, why shouldn't we try to bring that um, innovation into politics and have help hopefully millions of people feel like they have voice and choice. And would you say you're going after a more niche or extreme part of the party in the way that, say, the Tea Party did in the Republican Party? No, in fact, the opposite. We, we want to enable the average citizen, the average voter, millions of people who feel left out of the process. We want to lower the bar so they can spend five minutes and five dollars a month and feel like they actually made an impact and, and their voice was heard. Um, I saw a study that said 80% of Trump voters um, felt like no one um, listened to them. And so it sounds like you want to reach out to those people as well. Yeah, we, we do. We want to reach out to um, everybody who, who feels like it's, the bar is too high for them to actually have any impact and any um, voice and choice. And, and it's always too late. You know, it's, it's at election time. Um, and it's all, the candidates are decided, the agenda is set, and you're supposed to just vote or not. And we want to make it easier for people to get involved um, upstream much earlier. Now, as a, an investor, you're interested in what you call mobile 2.0. What do you mean by that, and where is the investing opportunity? Sure, well, if, if you think about um, a couple decades ago, we, were in mo we went from mobile 1.0 to mobile 2.0, and the, the idea was, in mobile 1.0, it simply was all available online. Now you can shop online. Uh, it's more convenient. But it wasn't, except for a few services, it wasn't 
driving a whole new level of innovation. It wasn't until Mobile 2.0, which was 2006, 2007, that we hit a whole new cycle of product innovation and growth that really delivered on the promise of, of the web. Similarly with mobile, um, 1.0 was just accessible and it drove massive growth because of the convenience. And my belief is that we're just entering this new cycle with mobile 2.0 where we're going to see products deliver on the potential of this network and the smartphone. And a few early examples for me were Uber, were Pokemon Go. Um, these were services that could not have existed on your PC. It wasn't just you ordered taxis on your computer and now you did on your phone. It was an entire network. And Pokemon Go was this and is this amazing game that couldn't exist without understanding your location and bringing you know, augmented reality in. And so I believe we're going to see in every part of our digital life stack new innovation. Think about travel. It's, it's a pain in the ass to book and change your travel on your phone. It's not easier. Why not? It should be. I mean, that's, that's the growth and innovation ahead of us. And so what does that mean for Zenga, which has struggled as there have been more players and more competitive competition in the space. How is there an opportunity for Zenga to exist and to, to grow in this new mobile 2.0 world? Well, I'll say that what I've been focused on and excited about at Zynga that fits into this mobile 2.0 strategy is the new opportunities on um, these messaging platforms like Facebook Messenger and iMessage. Um, we've seen that in China, obviously, with WeChat and in Korea with Kakao. And now we're starting to see these platforms open up to applications, games being the first layer. And it's now reducing the friction and making it possible uh, for the very casual game players to start to play and start to see new levels of innovation again. So do you think we'll see a sort of renaissance in mobile gaming within Messenger the way we did in that first era of Farmville? I hope so. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me about this idea of, of companies that are public but need to reinvent themselves. Sure. Is Zeng an example, Twitter? What are you what are you talking about here? Well, I believe that that there's a need in the public markets for a new kind of investor that I think of as a public venture capitalist. And the idea is, is just like a venture capital firm might have a 10-year time frame on their, their capital that's allocated to them so that they can in turn allocate uh, to companies that way, what if in the public markets we had investors that had that kind of time frame and they, they, they could have invested in a Netflix long after it was public but going through a reinvention phase? I wonder today, companies like Twitter, like GoPro, you know, they're going through some levels of reinvention of their business and you know, would they be better suited for uh, investors that have a longer term horizon? And I've personally been investing in uh, some of these companies that I think meet that, um, that kind of cr criteria, that they're, in a way, they're drawer stocks for me. They're, I know five years from now, I'll be using Yelp and I'll be using Twitter, um, but, but their, their businesses haven't been the perfect growth of the FANG companies. So which of these companies have you invested in? Twitter? Twitter. And, and, and which of the other ones? And why Twitter? Uh, Twitter, Twitter yeah. Lending Club, um, GoPro, Groupon. Um, and, and Twitter is the biggest one because I believe that, that Twitter is, is going to be part of my life stack. I believe it's, I'll be using it in five years. And I think that it has kind of some built-in upside as they right the ship and fix um, the, the, the business and um, their operating expenses and so forth and their margins, but there's also a call option on the reinvention of, of the product and service for growth. And I know Snapchat is not one of these companies because it's earlier in its life cycle, but why are you investing in Snap? I invested in, in Snap as a private company. I was blown away by <clears throat> the level of innovation. I think they are a mobile 2.0 company that continues to uh, really, just the Maps product they just launched is I think amazing, um, and and they they've really captured the imaginations of of one audience, and and I, I see them really innovating, and that's exciting. And you're not concerned about the stock trading below its IPO price? Uh, no, that's not my focus. <laughs> I'm trying to have a longer term focus. Well, certainly a, a lot of interesting companies to watch over the long term. Mark Pincus from Zenga and WTF. Thanks so much for joining us here in Sun Valley. I'm Julia Borston.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.